Good afternoon and welcome to the last talk of the day. You must be all exhausted, so please do come in and sit down. There's plenty of room, the seats are relatively comfortable, and the drinks are on the house. Can't argue with that. Uh, we have an interesting talk for you right now. That's high temperature PEM reformed methanol systems. With me today, I've got Anders Korsgaard, the CEO of Sur Energy. Please help me in welcoming him on stage. So, oh. well, yep. welcome. Works. <laughs> Could you please give a brief introduction to your company for those of you who aren't that familiar with you? Yes. Serenity is a Danish company uh, founded by myself and my partner Mess Bang in 2006, uh, working with high temperature PEMS. Uh, those of you who know us probably know of, uh, us from our uh, high temperature PEMS stacks, which we've been selling now for at least five years. So, um, yeah. Today we are also uh, producing uh, methanol reformed based systems, so uh, methanol battery chargers uh, based on our fuel cell systems. And we sort of have a, a dual sales strategy where we also sell our fuel cell stacks to other OEM customers and uh, that's of course an effort we would like to continue. So you do continue to offer your, your more traditional products as well as introducing a newer product? Yes, and uh, as, uh, as you can see in our booth, we still exhibit all our uh, former air-cooled high temperature PEMs. We also have a liquid-cooled generation coming up now, and uh, we actually, I think on, on this fair, we actually saw pretty good interest for, uh, for, for this new uh, product. Okay, so let's talk about your, your newer product today. It's, it's a high temperature reformed methanol fuel cell. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, as you can see uh, on our booth, we have a, a rather small package of uh, 350 watts. Uh, it contains uh, both our air-cooled high temperature PEM Serena series uh, uh, stack, as well as a reformer integrated uh, with uh, power electronics. So it's uh, effectively working as a, a battery charger uh, for uh, runtime extension of batteries. Uh, sometimes it also rains when it's vehicles, uh, as you can see in the in the green vehicle, the uh, professional vehicle we exhibit, ex exhibiting up there. So how is a reformed methanol fuel cell different than a direct methanol fuel cell, which is people are probably more used to hearing about? Yeah, um, direct methanol, of course, uh, from the word that takes uh, directly methanol into the fuel cell and converts it into electricity is a, a very similar process. Uh, the thing we offer compared to a direct methanol is a higher power density of the stack, which is the co most costly part of the system. Uh, so we believe that we, are, we, can, we can provide a, a better uh, value proposition and, and, and price structure at, 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 at higher kilowatt ratings. Okay, so that's why to do it, but just to understand a little bit more, uh, what is the reforming process? What happens? Yeah, basically methanol is converted into hydrogen and a, and a, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, that's uh, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and, and in particular the latter uh, tends to poison low temperature uh, catalysts. So with our high temperature products, uh, uh, we are we are quite resistant up to uh, one or two percent of that, and uh, so we can connect the reformer directly to the fuel cell without any in between gas cleanup. Okay, so you you're marketing uh, this unit as a mobile battery charger. Uh, why not just use batteries directly? Well, basically, um, we acknowledged a long time ago that the batteries uh, are very efficient at uh, providing power. Whereas uh, our value proposition is not power, it's actually energy. And the uh, energy we provide is basically stored in, the, in, 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 in some sort of liquid fuel. And in, in, in the case we have chosen to focus our commercial products on, it's, it's methanol, which has a very high hydrogen content. Uh, and so we offer energy that can extend the runtime of the batteries, say from one hour to maybe 72 hours or one working day for a vehicle, a professional vehicle, where you can also use the vehicle actually. You see up there, you can welcome to come visit us. Uh, you have a commercial truck, where it's also actually a mobile power plant for, for the operators, so they can use the 230 volt AC output plug to power various instruments and uh, tools. Would you, ever, would you ever operate uh, without a battery as an intermediary? Uh, only very rare circumstances where we have a very continuous load on our systems, which is uh, 
Uh, not very uh, common. So uh, in all other cases, basically we we charge batteries. Uh, that's that's what we are we are in it for. Uh, whether it's lead acid or laser ion uh, laser ion batteries or other types, uh, that's uh, sort of up to the customer. Uh, but we think that you know where we really have our contribution is on runtime extension of the batteries, as I mentioned. Yeah. Do you also have an option to use the heat produced by the reaction? Yes. Um, we have uh, in our vehicle activities, we, we also offer to use the high grade heat coming out of the fuel cell, uh, which is uh, 160 or, or maybe a little bit, a bit lower on our liquid cool systems to, to basically heat exchange toward a, a, a heating system in the, in the cabin or maybe even micro CSP on the long term. Uh, yeah. Okay, so could you give me an idea of the, of the cost of one of these systems? Can I, can I buy one of these systems? Yeah, it's actually listed uh, for some of the products uh, for the for the uh, uh, 350 watt battery charger. We uh, we charge uh, 9,000 9, euro at the moment, uh, one piece price. Of course, we have uh, more commercial offer offerings for uh, for integrators, uh, vehicle integrators, or other types of st more stationary uh, uh, professionals can also, of course, get volume reduction in the, in, in the price. Yeah. So, what does 9,000 euros give you? Well, it gives you the complete package, uh, more or less a plug and play. We 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 offer to uh, to also to to help you find uh, the, the fuel, distribute that, uh, and um, and then just a 350 watt battery charger package here. Okay, so uh, a lot of times with fuel cell systems, there's a lot of questions around the lifetime and durability. So if I'm buying something for 9,000 euros, I want to know how long it's going to last. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So, so, so basically, we are, we, are, we are right now conducting our, our field test at the moment, and, uh, and by the time we hit the market, we, 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 we will come up with a guarantee of between 1,500 and 3,000 hours longer term, 5,000 hours, but we are not there to offer, really offer like a, a very long time, like 20 or 40,000 hours. Uh, we don't believe that uh, we'll reach that uh, within the next couple of years at least. <laughs> are you looking to offer any guarantees? Yes, um, we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so using methanol as a fuel, you're still producing carbon dioxide, which is not the best kind of thing that we're trying to do. So I, I guess it depends. Uh, where do you get your methanol from? Yeah, as you're rightly saying, you know, uh, carbon neutral, or uh, uh, CO2 neutral comes from the choice of fuel. You can get black hydrogen, you can get green hydrogen, and you can get black methanol or green methanol. And uh, it's uh, always a matter of which source you get it from. And, uh, and usually, you know, today, most of our hydrogen or methanol comes from natural gas. Uh, but we are working now with, uh, with uh, a greener supply chain where we get a second generation approved, certified biomethanol to be used with our products. So we can, you know, say that we are 100% uh, carbon uh, CO2 neutral, yeah. That would be very wonderful to say. Uh, so... Speaking of the fuel, does the how does the purity of the fuel affect your product? In fact, the lifetime of your product. Um, purity, of course, is a is concern, and that's why we also would like to help our customers. You know, uh, um, enable the distribution of uh, to to the end customers. Yeah. So, what are you you doing to uh, try and affect the supply chain? Well, we have direct collaborations with some of the the chemical suppliers who are who who are supplying methanol today. We also have a uh, uh, collaboration with a company supplying green methanol, which we're currently, uh, currently trying to uh, to qualify. And uh, from that point, it's basically also a matter of which uh, tank form I'm distributing the methanol in. Does it contain any kerosene leftovers or whatever could have, have been in the tank before? That's, uh, of course, uh, very critical. Yeah. So you've mentioned a couple times the, the vehicle that you've got available over at your booth, D68, just down that way, if anybody's curious. Uh, could you tell me a little bit more about uh, how this vehicle, what, what project it's, it's under and, and what it's used for? Yeah. So this vehicle is a uh, part of uh, the Danish uh, demonstration program where we actually have five of those vehicles uh, running in the various applications. Uh, one of them uh, being, uh, sadly enough, uh, as a cemetery. Uh, but um, we have a good experience from that, and I uh, got a lot of customer feedback. Uh, this particular vehicle is going to a zoo, Aalborg Zoo in Denmark, and it's going to be operating, in the, operating there uh, for, 
as long as it runs. So basically, we don't know. Uh, we don't have any so plans to So, if anyone has a zoo that they'd like, <laughs> <laughs> like to use a vehicle for, then uh, yeah, it's all about zoo. You know, it's very well connected to airport and. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Why not? <laughs> uh, so, but this vehicle runs both on methanol and electricity. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, how do, how do you charge it? Do you pour methanol yeah, in, or you plug it in, or? Yeah, we just uh, under the uh, the, 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 the the lid. Uh, basically, you can you can flip it up uh, on on the truck, and you can pour in methanol just uh, by. Uh, putting fuel on your car, so it's uh, uh, pretty much non trivial and you can also connect it to a wall plug, uh, charging overnight, if that's what we want. And uh, besides that, so, uh, yeah, we also have the 230 volt AC outlet to uh, enable the customer to use uh, um, uh, machines to cut uh, bush and uh, vacuum cleaning and so on. Yeah. To, to charge the battery directly from the grid? Yeah, that's, that can also be done, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, under what conditions would you, you choose to, to pour in your, your energy or plug in your energy? Uh, that's very much up to the customer. For the project we have been in, they actually chose not to charge it from the grid for whatever reason. So they always, for com convenience reasons, just ran the, the, ran the fuel source, so they didn't have to mind about where they, where they left the vehicle. Uh, so they just place it wherever they wanted. So uh, sometimes uh, we, we do expect that uh, as it's often cheaper, you know, uh, methanol do cost uh, money and, and sometimes more than, than, the, than, than grid electricity. So it's all a matter of cost and convenience. Uh, it's difficult to predict uh, consumer behavior in that direction. Yeah. I guess you can buy convenience in that sense. Yeah. Have you done any, any calculations? Uh, can you predict any scenarios where it would actually be cheaper to, to use methanol directly rather than uh, plugging in the vehicle? It, uh, it does become attractive uh, when we go to the higher power levels, but our, our 350, you know, it's, it's, it's often a matter of uh, are there any cost savings in terms of uh, manpower needed for exchanging the battery or uh, um, other types of behavioral stuff. You know, wages are often, you know, the, the, the main cost when operating the vehicle, we typically see that the, the cost of having the man is 10 times the, the vehicle. So if you can save time, save time, become more efficient, that's that, that's really what what makes the, 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 the TCO come to be, become lower with our product, yeah. So when does this study end and you have more, more findings? Uh, it's about to end now, uh, this uh, particular project, but we, of course, are continuing with a lot of other customers, more uh, without any commercial support or uh, public support, uh, more, um, I'll say, uh, uh, confidential programs, uh, field test programs. So. Okay, I won't ask too many questions about that. <laughs> uh, does anybody else have any questions before we wrap up? not, I would welcome you to join Anders and the rest of his team over at their booth at D68. And you can go over and they've got one of those vehicles here for you to see. It's pretty interesting. It's worth a look. Uh, thank you very much, Anders, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. There'll be more interesting talks tomorrow. This was the last one for today. Please uh, wait around if you're an exhibitor for the networking event later on here and over in the cafe areas. Thank you.